after two police unions in New York publicly accused Shake Shack employees of poisoning them, we are learning more and more about the persecution complex of the police. And this isn't just something to laugh at. Sure, you know, Officer Karen's meltdown over an Egg McMuffin is funny in a way, and it's entitlement, and, you know, we should shame people with this mentality, but it speaks to a real danger that if someone has this mentality that they're always under attack, I mean... This explains why police officers oftentimes end up escalating rather than de-escalating because they always feel as if they're the ones who are under threat in this country and not the other way around. And what's interesting is that we're learning about the police persecution complex after we've had weeks with dozens of videos of police officers beating and gassing peaceful protesters and even targeting medics in some circumstances. But it's actually them who are the real victims. They're not the oppressors, they're the oppressed. Everyone is discriminating against them, according to them. So I'm sure that you've already seen this video of Officer Karen, it's uh, ridiculous, but for those of you who have not seen it, uh, take a look, we'll watch it and then talk about it. I decided to come to the McDonald's at Love's on the Ford Avenue exit, and I waited in line to get my food. I had already done my mobile order, so that, you know, people don't pay for my stuff because I just always like to pay for it myself. But I'm on my way home from work. Um, when I pull up to the window, they hand me my receipt. So I go to the second window to get my food and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And so the girl comes to the window and asks me what my order was. I repeat my order and my coffee um, order and they asked me to pull up because my food's not ready. It's uh, an English muffin meal with a hash brown and coffee. And I mean, I hadn't eaten since I don't know, probably about, I mean, I've been up for a very long time, but I haven't eaten in a while. So I was kind of hungry and I'm still waiting and I'm still waiting and they asked me to pull up. So I pull up forward and uh, a girl comes out with my coffee and just the coffee and she hands it to me and I have my window down and that's all she hands me is the coffee. So I told her, I said, don't bother with the food because right now I'm too nervous to take it. It doesn't matter how many hours I've been up. It doesn't matter what I've done for anyone. Right now, I'm too nervous to take a meal from McDonald's because I can't see it being made. I don't know what's going on with people nowadays, but please just give us a break. Please just give us a break. I don't know how much more I can take. I've been in this for 15 years and I've never, ever had such anxiety about waiting for McDonald's drive through food. So just have a heart, and if you see an officer, just tell them thank you. Because I don't hear thank you enough anymore. Oh, the tears of unfathomable sadness. Mm, yummy. I mean, I think that that video speaks for itself. Anyone who has gone through a drive through at a fast food restaurant, it doesn't matter if it's McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, sometimes you have to pull around and wait. I mean, this is a common practice. It doesn't mean that they're trying to poison you because you're a cop. You're not a victim, Karen. People are rightfully questioning the role of the police in our society because for far too long, police have been able to be aggressive. They brutalize peaceful protesters oftentimes, and yes, murder black Americans with impunity. And so the fact that we are now drawing attention to this long practice of like over-policing communities that has gone on for far too long, all of a sudden she melts down, she can't take it. Now, someone who is melting down because they took a little bit too long to bring her her egg McMuffin, that is someone who should not be in law enforcement. That is someone who is not stable enough to have a gun. Because if you honestly think that everyone is out to get you, then that's a really dangerous situation that you're creating. Like, if you respond to some sort of situation 
we can see that you're already on edge and you're going to want to escalate rather than de-escalate and handle it in, you know, a more calm and rational way. So this is a really huge thing. It's not just, you know, let's all laugh at Officer Karen over her Egg McMuffin. This is about a broader issue. This persecution complex can literally be deadly. The fact that officers think that way, that everyone is out to get them, is exactly why people get killed all the time by police officers, even if they're unarmed, right? I mean, this is really a microcosm of a broader issue here with this one viral video. And in an article for the Los Angeles Times, I think that Maria Kruder actually made some really fantastic points. She writes, if your typical American consumer got sick after drinking a Shake Shack milkshake tainted with a bleach-based cleaning solution, she would be rightfully upset. If that consumer then accused Shake Shack employees of intentionally poisoning her, publicly crying that she can't even take a meal without coming under attack, she would almost certainly be considered paranoid if not outright delusional, but for the typical American police union, paranoia is beginning to seem par for the course. On Monday night, two NYPD unions, the New York Police Benevolent Association and the Detectives Endowment Association, issued statements alleging that three New York police officers had been intentionally poisoned at Shake Shack. The NYCPBA tweeted a statement since deleted from its president, Patrick Lynch, claiming that the officers discovered a toxic substance believed to be bleach had been placed in their beverages. If the intent of signing diction of placed didn't clue you in, Lynch and the PBA made it even more obvious. When NYC police officers cannot even take meal without coming under attack, it is clear that the environment in which we work has deteriorated to a critical level. We cannot afford to let our guard down for even a moment. Meanwhile, the Detectives Association's president released a statement alleging that police in New York City and across the country are under attack by vicious criminals who dislike us simply because of the uniform we wear. Emboldened by pandering elected officials, these cowards will go to great lengths to harm any member of law enforcement. The us versus them warriors under assault party line couldn't have been clearer. In a not so shocking twist, however, these claims turned out to be false. The NYPD's own investigation cleared the Shake Shack employees of any criminality Tuesday morning. The bleach was more likely part of a cleaning solution that had been improperly removed from the milkshake machine. Sloppy consumer protection? Sure. Subfar food safety practices? Yeah, that too. A conspiracy to attack cops? Not in the slightest. And yet the police union's fast food focused fragility felt pretty familiar. Over the past few months, headlines about cops getting erroneously mad at restaurants have become surprisingly common, like the cop who accused fast food worker of taking a bite out of his McChicken because he forgot he'd taken the bite himself, or the cops who threatened to boycott a Philly sandwich shop for the dire sin of not giving officers free lunch, or the cop who lied about a McDonald's worker writing fucking pig on his coffee cup. While these stories might seem merely stupid and embarrassing for the officers in question, which to be clear they are, this apparent police obsession with the imagined specter of an Antifa fast food worker is a sign of a much deeper problem. As police brutality has become a more mainstream source of outrage over the past few years, police have increasingly closed ranks. Blue Lives Matter, Back the Blue, and Thin Blue Line imagery all have their roots in the same idea. The world is full of dangerous cop-hating criminals, and the poor, persecuted police officers are the only thing standing between order and chaos. What's so dangerous about these slogans, and indeed, about the frequent police accusations against restaurants, is how they encourage cops to interact with the rest of the world. Everything from the increase in SWAT usage of tanks and machine guns, to warrior-style training that teaches cops they need to either kill or be killed, is rooted in the idea that police are always under attack. Seth Stoughton, a law professor at the University of South Carolina and a former police officer, wrote about law enforcement's warrior problem for the Harvard Law Review, arguing that this warrior mindset is both common and destructive. Stoughton cites a 2010 article from Police One, a site offering police training, news, and career services that recommends police remain humble and compassionate, be professional and courteous, and have a plan to kill everyone you meet. Stoughton argues that this mindset creates a substantial, if invisible, barrier to true community police concluding that the assertive manner in which officers set the tone of encounter can also set the stage for a negative response or a violent interaction that was, from the start, avoidable.
school. The same paranoia that leads a police officer to assume he's been poisoned by a milkshake can lead him to needlessly escalate encounters with civilians, and as we've seen all too often, needless escalation can have tragic consequences. These stories aren't frivolous. They're an illustration of how deep and pervasive the toxic police persecution mindset can be. Excessive police violence isn't going to end as long as too many law enforcement agencies are peopled with or led by fragile, skittish warrior wannabes who have deadly weapons, qualified immunity, and the knee-jerk assumption that the people they're meant to serve and protect, especially black people, are trying to kill them. Until then, it's a lucky break when the only victim of police paranoia is a burger chain's reputation. So that article is absolutely perfect in my opinion. I mean, this warrior mentality, this view that everyone is out to get you and your job is super dangerous, this leads to people getting killed by the police. And it has to stop. It has to stop. And understand that when you compare police training in the United States to other countries, it isn't as long. I mean, this is why they just, they aren't capable of de-escalating. They always end up escalating because these are individuals who are absolutely skittish, as the article pointed out. And my niece just made, I think, a brilliant Facebook post. She works with kids. She's a social worker. And she's had more training than police officers. So, I mean, you can't just claim that people like Officer Karen, you know, are to be laughed at and disregarded. Absolutely not. This is a dangerous mentality that she is showing us. She's giving us insight into police officers in America and the way that they feel about the people that they're supposed to protect. You know, she feels as if they're always out to get them. They want to poison her. And we know, if you've ever gone to a restaurant, that having to wait a little bit longer for your egg McMuffin does not mean that your life is in danger. But the fact that something as, you know, insignificant as that leads her to fear for her life, literally, I mean, it shows you how fundamentally broken and beyond repair our system of quote-unquote policing is in America. This is why people say defund the police. This is why abolitionist arguments are gaining traction. It is because what we've come to recognize as policing has failed. And now is the time that everyone is paying attention that we actually fix this issue, both culturally and from an institutional standpoint.